Hey YouTube, it's Reese Forward here, progressive metal guitarist in the band you marry, and today I just want to chat about alternate picking, some of the licks I learned when I first started learning the technique, and some tips and pointers in the right direction to help you play fast and precise. Alright, so I guess the first thing to talk about would be comfort. Um, and what I mean is whether you sit in a regular position like this, or in a classical position with your guitar on your other leg, say with a footstool, whichever you find easiest for, I guess, your right and your left hand, where it kind of just fits on the guitar, and it, you know, it feels natural and it feels comfortable. I mean, I like to play in both positions, depending on the style I'm playing, or even, I guess, the intensity. If I'm just chilling out, then I'll play like this. Or if I really want to get stuck in, then I guess I'll kind of sit here. I'd like to think now that I've kind of hit like a safe zone, where, um, my alternate picking is like stabilized and I've found a really comfortable technique that's going to stick for me. Um, I've tried a few different techniques before from all wrist, mo all wrist movements, all elbow movements, um, all over the place, over, over the guitar bridge, over the pickup positions, and um, different hand motions as well. Even the way I'm holding the pickup, tried so many different techniques and Right now, I think I found the most comfortable for me, so I'll show you what I'm doing. Alright, so sitting in classical position, um, my forearm and the pick will be parallel to the floor. The headstock will be up around shoulder height, um, and I, I do use a footstool to elevate my left leg there. But, um, I guess, yeah, the pick will be at about a 10, maybe a 15 degree angle, kind of slicing downwards through the string, and that kind of helps the fluidity. I know some people keep it completely parallel, maybe angle it a little bit more, or even backwards. I mean, Sean Lane angled his pick backwards, and to me, he's like one of the greatest alternate pickers out there. But uh, I kind of overhang my thumb, so I'm showing a decent amount of flesh, and almost on the side of my index finger here as well. Oh shit, I dropped my pick. Here's another one. Kind of there. So I'm kind of holding the pick here. And I've never been a fan of anchoring, I mean I tried it a couple of times and, and never really found that it worked for me, but some again, some people do that great, so this is all just opinion. Alright, and the same right hand technique kind of applies if I was holding the guitar here, apart from my elbow would be raised a bit further up, my pick would not be parallel but the fretboard and the neck of the guitar would be parallel to the floor, so it'd be my arm that'd be at the 10 degree angle. And as for the actual motion, the up down motion of the right hand, I kind of use more of my wrist for um, the actual picking, and um, when I'm actually changing string, that's more elbow movement there, as if, say you were sweep picking, you'd want to mute the strings, it'd be a lot more elbow work than wrist, just to keep that clean and I kind of use the same thing while I'm on the pick. So now I'll show you a, a few licks that really helped me out when I was really starting this. I mean the first one I guess was from a guy back in school he was a big Paul Gilbert fan and uh, he showed me this lick which I always used to play with like barring Legato if I show you this lick. And I guess if you hear that, that's how I played it. Legato, you know, I bought it. It wasn't very much um, definition between the notes. Just did it. I don't know. Whatever that was. But, um, yeah, that's a really helpful one. If you start here on the fifth fret of the B, um, then six and eight, start on the downstroke, and the upstroke here on the, on the five and the high E is um, what you really want to focus on here. And some people play this outside picking, which would be landing that on a downstroke, which really works for some people. It's just not me. But, you know, personal, again, that's just the way I play. Another beginner helpful one that I kind of found out we can do it in the same position. Um, 
was if you play that that thing once and ascend back up and go all the way up to the seventh fret on the E, then back down, then all the way up to the eighth fret on the E, and then back down to the seven, and kind of repeat that round in the cycle, and that helped, I guess, build what would you call like a fluid motion? Let me show you. Always start in that first note here on the downstroke. Then we have the straight ascending sex stuff but look. And then put the same back down, start on the down pick. And a couple more three finger patterns would be this one. Which is kind of the inverted version of the first one I showed you. Which um, would actually start on an upstroke if you want to keep it to outside picking. Um, I guess we have um, the sixes, that other Paul Gilbert style one. Um, fives. Sevens. That one was kind of like, um, I know, just going. Up one note, down one, up two, down two, and up three, and down three. That's the first kind of four note pattern that I ever did. Apart from, um, I guess, just a straight. That'll be a B minor run. I mean, all these really like helped me out in the early days. I didn't really start doing the four note stuff for quite a while, but when I did get into it, these are the licks that I played at the time. I mean, these are all pretty basic. I'm not um, showing off. I just want to show you what um what really worked for me. Another cool three finger lick would be um I guess a ascending sixth uplift with um descending fourths on the way back. Let me show you. That would be starting on a downstroke. Alright, I never really did any of those, um, I guess you'd say John Trudy style uh, chromatic kind of um, I never did any of them kind of licks until I guess like a later date, but uh, I could honestly drag this video on for freaking hours and hours, but uh, I guess I kind of want to keep it short so you guys can do whatever you're doing. But uh, I do really hope this helps you out. I guess one more tip I just forgot is when playing really fast I do still kind of gravitate towards the back of the bridge as there's more tension on the string there Alright, I'm gonna end this, so sorry for dragging this video on. And I really hope some of this helps um, clean up your plane and it's gonna help out. Until next time.